Welcome to this video about image resolution. This video is for people working in the forensics field. Hopefully you've watched the first video in this series. That video is a super basic introduction to digital images. If you haven't watched that, I encourage you to go watch that first, and I'll put the link in the description below. So there are different ways to define image resolution depending on the application or industry you're in. For example, in the television industry, resolution refers to the number of pixels in a display. So, for example, 1080p means that the screen is 1080 pixels high, and 4K resolution means the screen has almost 4K pixels wide. Resolution being defined as the pixels on a screen makes sense for that industry, and resolution means something else to people in the printing and publishing industries. So basically, if you Google image resolution, you're going to find a number of different definitions. In the forensics world, resolution refers to the number of pixels it takes to span a specific real-world distance. The most common unit used is pixels per inch, PPI, also called dots per inch, DPI. In a photograph, a ruler must be placed next to the evidence, in the same plane as the evidence, and then by counting the number of pixels that traverse a specific distance on the ruler, you can determine the PPI. In forensics, you need to accurately determine an image PPI, so you can make measurements of objects in an image. You can compare two images with different resolutions side by side. You can print images at a one-to-one -one scale, meaning life size. And you can submit friction ridge images to APHIS systems for automated matching. Determining resolution can be called image scaling, image calibration, image spatial calibration. Just a quick review. Images are 2D arrays of pixels. The array is made up of rows and columns of pixels. Image height equals the number of rows, and image width equals the number of columns. So if this was an image, it would have 7 columns and 9 rows for a total of 63 pixels. Camera image PPI depends on the camera sensor array size, the lens that was used, the distance to the evidence, the zoom level, and other things. So basically there are a lot of variables, so by far the easiest way to determine the PPI of a camera image is to place a ruler next to the evidence and count the number of pixels that traverse a specific distance. Assume these two graphics are images of rulers. In this first image, if you count the number of pixels that span one inch, you'll count 12 of them, so that means this image has 12 pixels per inch. In this image, if you were to count the pixels that span one inch, you would count 31, so this image is 31 pixels per inch. Obviously in real life we don't make you count pixels along a ruler. We do that in software in the background, in CSI picks, the function we use is called manual calibration. Essentially, you mark the pixels at two points along a ruler, and you tell the software the actual distance, and we'll do the counting of pixels and the converting to PPI in the background. I'll do a quick demonstration now of the manual calibration in CSI picks. So I've opened an image taken with the camera of a fingerprint with a ruler next to it. I've done a number of experiments with manual calibration to see what the best recommendation would be, and it seems to be to maximize the space on your screen, zoom in on the ruler so that the longest distance spans the width or the height, and then to mark from center of a tick to the center of another tick. The further the distance, the better. So I open Calibrate, Manual Calibration, and then I just have to click the two point. As closely as I can, I go to the center of that tick and come across to the center of this tick. The real world distance is 20 millimeters and click OK and the resolution was calculated to be 650 pixels per inch. So you can't set the PPI of a camera image. You need to measure it after the image is taken. If you need a camera image of a print to be a thousand PPI you need to do the following. Step one is to measure the actual image PPI, and then two is to use resample to change the image PPI to be a thousand. Resampling will actually change the number of pixels in an image. 
it will use some interpolation technique to either increase or reduce the number of pixels so the image will become smaller or larger depending on what needs to be done. So if I come back to this image, if I need this image to be 1000 ppi, I've measured it to be 650. I go to resample. So since 500 and 1000 dpi are the most commonly required dpi, we've got buttons there, but you can set it to any dpi. I'm just going to say 1000 and to change the image. So now it's at 1000 dpi, but you can see it's a much bigger image than it was. So this slide is just to reinforce that subsampling changes the number of pixels in an image. Now a brief explanation of image file headers. Images contain pixel intensity data, obviously, and other information like image width and height, the number of bits per pixel used to encode intensity, the model of the camera, the date the image was taken, the horizontal and vertical resolution in units of DPI, etc. This other information is called the file header. In camera image headers, the default horizontal and vertical resolution in DPI is not the DPI you need in forensics. It's usually set to a value like 72, 96, or 300, depending on the camera manufacturer. It has nothing to do with the number of pixels that make up an inch in the real world as captured in the image. It would be impractical and usually impossible for a standard camera to determine DPI as required for forensic image analysis. Most images, like the one here, wouldn't have one DPI in that sense anyway, because things in the foreground of this image would have a much higher DPI than things in the background. Now is a good time for me to explain why when you open a camera image in CSI Pix, you'll see that the resolution says unknown. When we open an image, we read the information in the image header. If the resolution is less than or equal to 300 dpi, we ignore it because it's probably just a camera default value and not the dpi in the sense that you need for forensic analysis. And generally, forensic images will have a higher dpi anyway. You'll need to use the calibration function and a ruler in the image to find out what the resolution actually is. And if you save the calibrated image, the resolution will overwrite the 72 or the 96 or the 300. So next time you open the image, the DPI will be correct. Now I'm going to get into the scanner image headers. Images captured by a scanner do contain accurate DPI information. This is because the items are placed on a glass surface that's at a fixed distance from the scanner sensor array, and the system uses resampling to give you the actual DPI you requested when you grabbed your image. Basically, the system allows you to set the DPI. But you can place a ruler next to something you're scanning just to be on the safe side. I have seen images from scanners where the DPI information was corrupted, and I've also seen it where the DPI information has been removed. So if you do have a ruler in your image, you can always get back to the actual DPI. A word of caution, DPI is accurate as long as what you image is actual size, I mean life size, like a lift or an inked fingerprint. For example, if you print a fingerprint image enlarged at 300% and then scan it at 500 dpi, the dpi needed for forensic analysis of that scanned image will not be 500 dpi. It'll be 1500 dpi. I hope this isn't too confusing, but if you have questions, please contact me and I'll try to help. So you can set the dpi, the ppi, of a scanner image using the scanner settings before you scan the image. The DPI information in the scanned image header file should be accurate. Setting the camera DPI will be done using the scanner interface, so it's going to look different for every model of scanner. These are a couple that I had access to. This is a Canon MX530 scanner, and you can see right here is where you would set the DPI. Over here is for an Epson scanner, and right here is where you set the DPI. Make sure to check the resolution you are using when you make a scan and confirm for yourself that it's showing up accurately when you open up the image in CSI Pix. So when you open a scanned image, the resolution will appear appropriately here underneath the image. You don't need to do any calibration. So this is the end of the video. I've made a number of videos about how to calibrate images using CSI Pix. I'll add links to those videos down below in the description.
Thank you for watching. I hope this explains image resolution in a way that's easy to understand. It's one of the more difficult things to explain, but it's really important. If you have any comments or questions, please reach out to me.